Hey guys, my name is Ram. I, I lead uh, engineering operations at SignalFX. SignalFX is a real-time application monitoring platform uh, specifically for applications and uh, cloud services. So SignalFX platform is microservices-based, and my talk is going to be about testing or product quality for microservices. So before SignalFX, I come from an enterprise background. I used to work for VMware. I'm used to a totally complex system like that, which is monolithic-based. And at SignalFX, I was hit with a microservices-based architecture, which is totally decoupled, uh, completely different from the other one. And again, I'm speaking to the choir. This is kind of what I was used to, where uh, SDLC with monolithic was totally silo-based. You had different teams in different silos. And you spent a whole amount of time transferring information between these silos and releases were like months, quarters apart. At SignalFX, not only was I hit with a CD, continuous delivery, where we were shipping code every week, my first task was to optimize this. And while I was looking at how to optimize, the time drain I found was from the test phase, where every other piece was pretty much automated. The test phase, specifically for new features and new services, somebody had to write a framework. Somebody had to write test cases. And that was the real time drain. And any time you look at making change to product quality, you look at this quality triangle, which is, I think you're familiar with this, you can really pick only two at a time. You either get high quality, you do it quickly at low cost, or some combination of this. And as a startup, you're typically at low cost, done quickly. The real question was, can we get a mix of all three? And this is kind of what the solution we proposed. It's a process and a material difference. The first one is testing as a microservice, which is a process change, and micro test harness, which is a material change to how you do things. So what is testing as a microservice? It's really treating testing as a software engineering function. right? It's you're staffing it with software engineers. It's a software developer. You have a feature developer. You have a test developer. They are of the same skill set. It's just that the, cost, the, the, the end uses are different. To go a little more in detail, a feature developer, he owns his feature. He writes test plans. He writes test cases. He takes it end to end. A test developer, all he's doing is he's providing test harnesses for a service. So once you do that, what you get with is a feature developer takes it end to end. And you save a lot of time in the transfer of information between about the feature between a developer to the testing team. In effect, you're really getting rid of the whole QA team. And you basically have developers shipping code end to end. And you're getting services from different areas of your business, ops, testing services, which is really filled with software engineers. They're just doing different functions. So it kind of becomes a really level playing field. That's one concept. The other one was micro test harness. So as we went from monolithic to microservices-based architecture, the test harness has remained the same. It's been a single end-to-end -end harness that people have been using uh, across multiple microservices, which really doesn't work with speed. So the concept that we came up was, what if we had a single end-to-end -end framework, but we could build micro test harnesses, one per service or, or one per multiple services? So that, that way, you get agile. It's a single repo you're building for a service, and you, you get on with it. Uh, so obviously, when we proposed this plan, we got a bunch of pushback from developers because, you're, as you can imagine, you're adding more content to, the, to their workload. Uh, but the benefits kind of started showing up, and they kind of speak for itself. So the first benefit we obviously saw was speeding up of release cycles. Uh, and, and the key point here is the fact that you removed the transfer of information about a feature from the developer to the test developer, that saved significant amount of time. And the feature developer was just shipping code, and he was writing everything that he wanted. The second one was resource plug and play. So the left side is what you have traditionally, where you have different people of different skill sets. Think of this as a jigsaw puzzle. How easy would it be to solve a jigsaw puzzle with the right side compared to the left side? Right side, you just have software engineers. You can plug and play them with different roles. Everything becomes efficient. Uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of like a given, I guess. Uh, the, the, the dev QA ratio or the dev test ratio was pretty high. The traditional ratio is like 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3. With this approach, we brought it down to 1 is to 8. And it really helped with employee morale as well. You have a, imagine a team with a bunch of people of different skill sets. You just have frustration. You have like different pecking orders. With software engineers, across the board, it's, it's the same level. You speak the same language. Your, your frustration gets down. And an, an unintended benefit of this one was efficient hiring. 
We were just hiring software engineers. The whole engineering stack was software engineers. You could plug and play people. Our onboarding was fine. Everything was smooth because you're looking at a specific level of skill set. Um, so if it's one takeaway I want you guys to take from this, if you treat testing as a software engineering function, staff it and build it around that, you can save a ton of, ton amount of uh, effort and time. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you.